Evening. Hope you've all had a lovely day. If you're watching our um, replay, I don't know if I'll be able, well, to everyone tonight who's watching and those on replay, I'm not sure I'll be able to get through everything I've got on this case tonight. So it'll probably be going to a second part tomorrow. We'll see how we go. Quite a few videos and police interviews, things like that to go through. And I've also got some, I want to go back over the paperwork for this young girl. Of, no, not this young girl, of Stephen Stearns, Stephen Stearns, as they call him. So, I don't know. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. we got this. This is the... There's two interviews here in one. Right, so... And you've got, like, the first interview, which is with a male detective. And then you've got the second interview which is with the Sex Crimes Unit detective, detective. And that's the best one. <laughs> that's the best one. But I have put both of these interviews already out. But I just haven't gone over them. I was waiting for tonight when I'll get them both together and then we can pick the bones off them. Right, let's start. Hey, can you guys go to the guest bedroom upstairs? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go right back to the beginning because for some reason it didn't start at the beginning. 24-011313. Can you state your full name? Jennifer Lucette Soda. All right, Jennifer. So um, I'm here to talk to you today. We're going to talk about, um, and you're familiar with kind of why we're talking right now, right? Yes. Okay. Um, can you tell me when is the last time you were with this office? Saw her, I'm going to say Sunday night. Hold on. She goes, he asks her, when was the last time you saw 
And a lot of this is redacted out. So when it goes, when you get a B, a, like a blip noise where you get nothing, it's where they've, um, watched it, watched it, out, redacted it. So he asked her when he last saw Magdalene. And she tags this big, <sighs> exile. And I'm thinking, what? Is this too much for you, love? You know what I mean? Your daughter's missing. This is the day after you you report your daughter missing, and you'll go, <sighs> Like, again? Yes, again, and again, and again, until we get the truth. Right? And she goes, I'd have to say some... Uh, what do you mean you'd have to say? You either saw a Sunday or you didn't see a Sunday. One of them. Okay. Heard her. I heard her one day getting ready for school. So okay. you last saw her Sunday night about what time? I was say 11 p.m. before she went to bed. And you were here at home? Yeah. And... Where did she go to bed? Was she in her room, your room, or something else? She actually slept upstairs uh, with um, um, the other guest dead. bedroom. We we were all going to sleep together in the same bed, but I needed some good sleep, and um, I, I had not. I got a new job recently. I haven't been well rested. I needed some sleep, so I asked, "Hey, can you guys go to the guest bedroom upstairs?" Mm -hmm. Um, I knew he was going to get her ready. And Sorry. Okay, so um, you needed some good sleep. So was it about 11 o'clock? Yeah. Um, Did you say, I'm sorry? And then start saying you needed some good sleep. Excuse me, love. Can I tell you something? <laughs> Your mother. I can't remember. My kids are all grown up and left home. But I cannot remember when I've had a good night's sleep. It's got to be before my son was born. And he's now in his 30s. Grown man. Family of his own. But I still go to sleep worrying about my children. You don't get a good night's sleep no more, love. Um, I sent them upstairs and I went to bed. She sent them upstairs and she went to bed. Hmm. What do you think I was going to do? Oh, um, was he going to get a duvet cover and sleep on the floor? Hmm? While she slept in the bed? Or in an armchair in the bedroom or something in the bedroom. Yeah, right, love. You literally gave Stefan Stearns the red light to do what he was doing. Okay. And that was about 11? Yeah. And you... Do you guys normally all sleep together? Because I know you said that she sleeps in your room with you typically, right? Uh, she sleeps with me typically. Uh, typically when he comes into town, because he, he, no he lives with his parents in Northport, Florida. Mm -hmm. When he comes to town, he'll sleep in the guest bedroom. Okay. And Stefan is the one you're referring to, right? Yeah, Stefan. Stefan. How often does he stay here? Oh. He moved away back in December, so I'm going to say um, he's visited at least two to three times since then. Okay. Why did he move away? Um, he was offered a better, well, his dad had offered him a job, mm -hmm. but it fell through. Oh, so okay. now we're trying to get him back here. And he just visits. Yeah. When he visits, does he stay for like hours, days, weeks? Well, some news I found out 
the two housemates right didn't even know right that uh Stephen Stearns had stopped was stop, was invited back to stay the night. They thought that her, Jen and him had split up. They didn't realise Stephen was in the fourth bedroom. And why on earth, tell me please, as a mother, Jen, why on earth are you making your... Why's your daughter got this little fenced-off area in the dining area, dining room area, that you use as a dining room? Well, fenced off area with her bed there. Why hasn't she got a bedroom? Why don't you make him sleep there and give her the bedroom? Because I've noticed something else on that bedroom. Bedroom number four. Got a lock on it. A chain on it. Yep. So you can't just walk in that bedroom. No, can you, Jen? No. But you make your daughter uh, her own little private areas in the dining room with like these partitioning, but uh, blind sort of thing. Uh, I would say days. This time we had planned on him staying a whole week. Of, um, I was going through training at work. Mm-hmm. So I wanted him to be here to help me with the dog, help me with the training. Okay, so this time he was planning to stay for a week. How long has he been here? Simple question, love. Or when did he arrive, rather, this time? I can't remember if he arrived Saturday or, or Sunday morning. Okay, that's fine. Sometime this weekend? Yeah. Well, Saturday... Uh, Madeline, I understand, was at her grand's because she told her grand on Saturday she didn't want to go home. I wonder why, because she found out that Stephen, Stephen, I say Stephen, they say Stephen, right, was there. So that was last night around 11. And so about what time did you hear her on uh, Monday morning? I heard everyone getting ready around, let's say, 7.30, 8 o'clock. And was it just Steph? Who else lives here? I have roommates. Um, okay. I have Angelica Negro. Uh, there's one roommate, and then Natalie Rosero. Okay. And you just heard all of them, or did you hear anyone specific? No, I just heard, uh, if anything, Stefan came and woke me up accidentally because, um, he was trying to let the dog out, Mm -hmm. and the dog, uh, gets really nervous sometimes. Mm -hmm. I was trying to help him with that, uh, get him on his leash, but, uh, he got him situated and took even the dog don't like him. I wonder why. Okay. Did you hear around seven or eight? I heard noises in the kitchen, but I'm not sure, you know. Not sure who it was exactly. Who it was exactly, yeah. Sure. It could have been any of the roommates. But you didn't see her leave Monday morning. Uh, were you still in bed or still in your room? I was still asleep, yeah. Gotcha. What time does she normally leave for school? Uh, We usually leave around... um, 8.50 at the latest. Okay. What time does she have to be to school by? Uh, 9.28 is when school starts. Gotcha. And so you... I think you had said the previous night you and Stefan had agreed that he was going to get yeah. and take her in yeah. the morning. Okay. 
and they were going to stop at McDonald's and get breakfast, but she changed her mind last minute and did not want McDonald's. Okay, how'd you find that out? Uh, when did I find that out? When Stefan called me around 10, 18 in the morning, um, I had stepped out to go get blood work done. Mm -hmm. And he had just let me know that uh, he just got back home uh, from running a few errands. And that uh, I asked, did you guys ever just stop at McDonald's? And he said, no, she changed her mind. He, he tried convincing her a few times that she did not want McDonald's anymore. At what time did you leave the house yesterday in the morning? Or at what time did you step out, rather? I'm going to say around 9.30. Had Stefan returned at all? No. So you were there from, just so I have my times kind of right, so you woke up around 7 or 8. You saw Stefan because uh, you, you, you helped him with the dog because he was letting the dog out, right? Yeah. Um, and then did you go back to sleep or were you just kind of in the room? I laid back down and went back to sleep. Okay. And then do you remember what time you woke up after that? I believe I set my alarm for 9 a.m. Gotcha. So it would have been around 9 a.m. that you woke up. Um, and in that time... In that time, you didn't see Stefan return at all? Okay. You left around 9.30, and then Stefan called you around 10 to say he got home? Yeah. Cool. Got it. Um, okay. Did he say anything else aside from she didn't want to go to McDonald's? Um. Such as? Have you strangled her? About her, no. About his morning, yes. He had um, tried going to the vape shop when it opened, right after he dropped her off from school, mm -hmm. and waited, but they never opened on time, so he came back, hung out a little bit, and he came home around 10, and then went back out eventually to the vape store to go get some vape stuff. So he left after 10. What time did you get back home for the day? check something. I'm going to check what time my blood work appointment is at. I'll give you more of an accurate time. Yeah. Okay, so my appointment was at 10, 15, and it took them 45 minutes to see me. So I didn't get home until 11, 15, 11, 30. Mm -hmm. And was stepping back at that point in time? I'm going to say yes. Okay. I'm gonna, uh, can't remember. And then what did the day look like after that? Um, so I did my blood work, then I came back, and then I just waited. I waited for the rest of the day until 2.30 to leave. Uh, well, I waited in the car line, so I'm first in line mm -hmm. to pick okay. up. Yeah, that car line can be vicious. Yeah. So you left approximately 2.30. Yeah. And pickups around 4, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, when you got there at 4, then what happened? Oh, she's there way before four. She's there by 3 p.m. She sat in the car for a whole hour. Right? Sat in the car for a whole hour outside the school. I waited in the car line for about 10 minutes. Um... Liar. You waited in the car line for one hour. You waited in the car line for 10 minutes before you thought, hmm, she's not coming, is she? Um, and she never came out. So I thought, Maybe she, I missed her. I couldn't remember if I told her I was picking her up from school that day or if she had to walk to the office. Okay. So I went to the office to see if she made it. 
She never did. I drove around a little bit. Okay. I drove around a little bit. Um, looking for her, I went back to the school. The school was closed at this point. Um, I wanted to speak to somebody at the office to see if anybody could tell me if she had been there. Uh, I think at this point I had called, before I went to the school, I actually called her best friend and I said, with you, I can't find her. She's she didn't walk to the office and she wasn't at school when I went to pick her up. She said mm -hmm. she never made it. Um, she, 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 she's it's a first or second period. And I'm like, what do you mean? I dropped her off or I, we dropped her off close to school. And she said she didn't make it to first or second period. I said, please check with the rest of your friends. Uh, she did. She got back to me and said none of them saw her today. I emailed one of her teachers. Her teacher texted me her attendance for the whole day and she wasn't in school at all. That's when I knew something was wrong and I freaked out. Okay. Um, is it typical of to walk to after school? If I'm working, yes. And where's, where, I mean, in relation to the school, like, is it a close walk, long walk? It's a very close walk. Okay. So typically in the morning, if uh, I guess before Stefan moved, did he live with y'all? Um, so it's typical of him to be able to get her ready in the mornings and drop her to school. Do y'all tend to split that responsibility or what does that look like? Typically I do it. Okay. Uh, this morning, because, because of my work schedule, because I've been so exhausted, I asked him to take over and do it, and he said he would. Okay. Has he done it before, though? Like, he's is he familiar with how to drop her off? And... I'm going to say he's done it once before, once or twice before. I'm not too sure. Okay. In the time since he's been back, well, not this time, because he's only come back over the weekend, but in the other time. Excuse me. You let your boyfriend take your daughter to school, but you can't remember how many times he's took her. Okay. You can't say, yeah, we take her once a week or twice a week. Once or twice before. Okay. He's done it maybe once or twice. I'm, I'm going to say, yeah. Is there any reason that he drops her off or he dropped her off a block away instead of dropping her off to the school? Because she asked. Because she is embarrassed of his car. You know what I get when she answers some of these questions? You know when you got these forms to fill in? And it's a yes or no. Or maybe. This is how I'm getting... This is the feeling I'm getting off her. It's a yes, no, or maybe. So she's answer, answering a question, eh? Really? When did she express that? <laughs> Multiple times <laughs> when we've been like, okay, I think Stefan might take you to school or he might pick you up. She goes, can he pick me up far away? Can can he leave me here? Like, I don't want I don't want to be seen. I'm just like, what car does he drive? I'm curious. It's that Oh, okay. But to her, that's an old. No. <laughs> Fancy taste. I get it. I get it. Um, can you remember anything about Sunday or Saturday or this weekend 
where she may have said that she was wanting to hang out with friends or something she was wanting to do or on, anything? On Sunday, she actually had a party uh, and she had some friends come over. Uh, so she hasn't expressed that she wanted. She actually got to spend time with friends and family. She had a great Sunday. Um, okay. She came back with a lot of presents. She was super happy. Um, okay. So. Well, to be honest with you, She's a 13-year-old girl. Her bedroom is in the dining room area, right? because you've got the kitchen and then that table where they're sitting to do their interviews. And then just beyond there, you've got these, like, concertina sort of things. That is her bedroom behind there. And I wouldn't want to bring any of my friends home if that was my bedroom. Because she's got no privacy. Right? Everything she says is going to be heard. Because her mum chose to put her there and let two rooms out to some uh, house guests, house people who stayed there. And then the third bedroom upstairs was, oh yeah, Stefan Stearns. Wasn't her room. He should have been made to sleep in the living room. He was a visitor. He was there once or twice a week, if that. Why should she have her bedroom there? Her bedroom should have been upstairs. So, no arguments at home recently or anything? Um, has she ever, in the totality of, I guess, everything, as long as she's been, ever gone off to spend time by herself, or gone to hang out at a park by herself, or something to kind of clear her own head? So there's a lake right behind this, hat, this building. Mm. She'll sometimes sit at the dock by the, uh, by the lake, but I check on her often. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out, I mean, if she, I don't know if something at school upset her, something here upset her, not that it would be anyone's fault, but if there's somewhere that she may go for like, you know, peace of mind. Yeah, it would be the lake right behind the house. Does she do any extracurriculars? No. Got it. Now, your um, your roommates, I know you told me their names earlier, but can you give them to me again? I didn't write them down. Sure. Um, Angelica and then Negro, N-I-G-R-O. Uh -huh. And then mm -hmm. Nathalie, which is N-A-T-H-A-L-I-E. Mm -hmm. Rosero. R-O-S-E-R-O. Okay. Do you have their phone numbers by chance? If they're not here. One of her housemates used to have her son come over and stay during the week. That to me, I said this last night when I heard about her having housemates and this one housemate would have her son over. That worries me. Are you okay? Do you have to use the bathroom? No, I'm just anxious. Oh, okay. I've got anxiety. Let me see. She's probably doing that Angelica, leg strike she again. Primarily speak Spanish, so you okay. probably need a Spanish speaker. Oh. Uh, and then Natalie. When's the last time you got in any kind of trouble at home? I'm going to say a few weeks ago. What was that um, for? I don't think... 
if she gets a yelling or if she gets in trouble for anything, it's for her disorganization and messiness. So she leaves laundry on the floor. Her room's a mess. Um, she keeps her space very or Her room's a mess. She hasn't got a room. Disorganized. So I, I kind of get on top of her. Do I remember the actual argument? No. When I went through her text messages back on February 2nd or 3rd, she had expressed to a friend that, you know, I was crazy. I was acting, you know, yeah. being nuts. Um, All this world stuff to say. Yeah. Apparently I had, I don't remember this in this conversation. I remember saying this once, but not in February. But uh, she had said, uh, you know, if she continues to behave this way or not listen, um, you know, when she turns 18, I'm not going to want to live with her. Okay. Or um, also, I would ship her off to her dad's. Oh. But hold on, the police detective asked you why why she would get into trouble, right? So, what have her text messages got to do with that? Why she would get in trouble for? Did you not like what she was putting, sending in a text message? I, Let's do say the truth hurts. I never. Where's your we, dad live? Houston, Texas. Okay. Um, has she ever expressed wanting to go back and live with him? No. How often does she uh, see him or talk to him at all? Talks to him once in a while. Um, via phone or probably? Yeah, via phone, yeah. Okay. Uh, text message or Instagram, they'll message each other. Um, but I talked to him last night and she's like, just so you're aware, she hasn't said anything about making plans to come over here or see me or come visit me. So he doesn't have any information on where she might be. Okay. He's actually willing to come over here too, if we need him to. Okay. Um, but she's never made any plans, I guess, to go see him. No. What's, uh, what's the dad, what's that, her dad's name? Do you know his phone number? So I think it's this one. It's I should take so long to answer questions. Yeah. How long has he lived? Or how long? He's lived, uh, he was in the military way, either Kansas or... Oh, so he's never had any, like, custody or anything no, of her? nothing. Okay. And has she ever, I guess, has she ever formed, a, like, a relationship with him where they bonded and talked or anything that, like, she... I guess I, I would try to rule out the possibility that she would be trying to go to Texas and see him or meet up with him or... They're as close as they can be with how limited contact he does have with her. He he texts her once in a blue, right? No, oh, not okay. as not as consistent as I would like him to, but okay. I don't think she's. She makes that the father to be out to be out such like um, a father who who doesn't want anything really much much to do with his daughter. But when you hear him in an interview, in that interview with John, he is heartbroken. He's heartbroken about his daughter. And I understand that after the funeral with the ashes, I don't know how true this is, so don't quote me on this, I heard that the Jen let the father take her ashes. She didn't keep the ashes. Hmm. So, uh, if that is true, that says a lot. Making her move to go. Yeah, yeah. Um, she's left her debit card here. All of her money's here. Um, her cell phone's here. Is it typical of her to leave her cell phone? Does she normally have it? She's got ADHD. She's very forgetful. This happens often. Oh, so she frequently forgets her things. Yeah. Okay. Um. Um.
as far as her uh, mental diagnosis. She's diagnosed with ADHD. How long has she had ADHD? Since she was like five, six. Um, they also diagnosed her at the same time with autism. Um, so she had, she's had an autism diagnosis for a few years now. I re reassessed her recently. They told me um, she had some autistic traits, but they weren't sure if she was autistic. Yeah. Um, so. So, I mean, do you ever notice her uh, mental capacity impacting her ability to, I guess, be around other kids or function normally? I'd say sometimes because she acts. I'm not sure. Sometimes, sometimes she'll make some decisions that I'm just like, where did that come from? Like, I mean, is that like, would that be a result of a mental disability or would that be like the result of her being? I mean, does she, I guess like basic questions I always kind of ask her, does she, can she feed herself without assistance? Does she shower and bathe without assistance? I mean, she has a phone so she can text and talk to people. Uh, she has friends at school. Gotcha. Um, and has she ever complained about school? Uh, not complained exactly. I know it's tough on her. She's given a lot of work. She's always behind on work. Mm, okay. Got it. Um, and I think the deputies already last night kind of went through her social media a little bit, but, um, if you're okay with it, I'd actually like to take her phone so that I can see if I can get anything else from it. Um, you know, typically I will, uh, typically me being able to go through it and go through texts and social media will help me sort of establish a pattern of where people go and what not. That's something you'd let me do. Um, sure. Will you take her phone away forever or just no, no, for right now? Just for as long as I need it to actually go through it. So okay. um, I'll give it back to you as soon as I'm done. Um, as soon as we find her, I'll give it back to her hopefully. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that's just about all the questions I have at the moment. Um, you know her better than I do. It, I guess my, my last thing would be like, what do you, what do you think based off of everything that we've talked about and everything that you've learned so far? Is anything sticking out to you? Based off of everything, me knowing her and knowing how she is and how tight knit we are, like, I don't think she would run away. Mm -hmm. Uh, I feel like she was taken, like, on that short walk from where she was dropped off to the school. Uh, it was early in the morning. I'm not sure how many cars were around. Mm -hmm. um, I think she was dropped off somewhere between 8.30 and 8.45 in the morning, which is norm earlier than we normally take her. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, I want to say, I think I, from what I understood, Orange County got footage of someone by the church in a description of what she was wearing early that morning, mm -hmm. just hanging out in the parking lot. And then she got up and left. Yeah. So the video, um, they wrote it here, but there was a video of, uh, essentially what looks like her, um, at around eight 45, just about that time. Um, walking into that church parking lot that's right near where she got dropped off by Stefan. And it looks like she sits there for about 15 minutes or so and then walks away. Um, so I'm wondering if she, it's typical for her to wait at that parking lot too for my stepdad to pick her up from school. So it's not abnormal for her to hang out there. In that parking lot? Yeah. Okay. Um, do you, can you think of any reason why she might have chosen yesterday morning to to wait there um i mean obviously your stepdad's not your stepdad's not picking her yeah, he up in the morning, her up. but i wonder if she knew like if she had an idea she was super early so she was just trying to kill time a little bit um but i don't know why she didn't go directly to the school like, yeah she should have okay uh, I know when Stefan dropped her off, he said that he saw her rummaging through her phone as he drove away. 
like deeply looking into her not her phone her sorry backpack. her backpack yeah, yeah. i'm assuming she was looking for her phone and realized she didn't have it with her at that time got it but um okay does she have a does she have any kind of boyfriend or significant other at school that she's ever talked about or expressed no boyfriend she did recently tell stefan that she had a crush on a boy oh okay and that's and we saw messages between them and nothing seemed weird but you can okay. look through that as well his Thank name you. is Another, I assume, another middle school boy. Yeah. Okay. Are you doing something different out here? Yeah, yeah. They're right out there. They just wanted to ask him a couple of things, but I figured I'd, I'd just ask you this at the same time for the sake of time. Um, do you recognize this vehicle at all? I wanted to see if I could. I know it's pretty grainy. Uh, um, it's this one right here. That one's tough, but. Does that look familiar at all? No. You want to know that anywhere? I don't know that part. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Yeah, so this is the, it's hard to show you on my phone because the quality of the video just kind of gets worse when I downloaded it from the church's computer uh -huh. and the quality just gets kind of worse. Um, can you make out like the shape of that being black shorts and that being a possibly a green jacket? I see the green. Would that... I mean, I know it's very difficult to recognize, but would that would that be something? That you, some clothes that she owns, or yes. would the quality be too bad for you to be able to tell based on that? I mean, the quality is terrible. But yeah. The color scheme. Would that be akin to something that she owns? Yeah. Gotcha. And the hair looks a little dark in the yeah. from here. Dirty blonde. It, it, could, it could pass for dirty blonde. That could I possibly think, yeah. be her. Okay. Um, is that, I, I can't tell just from looking at it, but is that possible? Is that Stefan's car? It looks a little darker from there, but I almost can't tell like if it's a Toyota or a, looks a little different. From the front looks different. That, that looks like a Toyota from the front. From and the then front from it looks the different, right? And then from the side, it could be. It's got a little, I mean, yeah, the grill is kind of the same a little bit. The headlights look a bit the same. Okay, cool. And I just wanted to see if you kind of were able to to help me with that. Um, so this whole living in the woods thing, I have people like tromping through the woods right now on horses and ATVs and all sort of things. But has she ever mentioned that before? Just in that text that I saw. Just that's that's the only time you've ever heard of it. Is she outdoorsy at all? Is she like camping? We used to go hiking. Okay. Uh, but we haven't done that in a while. Okay. Um, Where did you go? Was it around here? Where would we go? We'd go hiking in like St. Cloud. Um, Lake Lizzie Preserve is what it's called. Oh, yeah. Well, that's not that's, too, too far. It's about that's, 35 minutes away. Yeah. Okay. Uh, on 182. Um, Lake Lizzie Preserve. We've, got, we've also walked Shingle Creek before, but we haven't done that in a very long, long while. Got it. Um, but no, I know the thing is, I started talking to her about World War Three. I was talking about, I'm like, hey, this is going on in Palestine and Israel right now. Oh, she's talking to her about the so, wars. I, I, was, I was telling her, I was talking to her about just what's happening politically, and I'm like, you know, I don't know what that means for us, but we'll see what happens. But I've talked to her about World War III, so that's what I'm just saying. How that long ago was that? I mean, is that something that might have impacted ago. her? Yeah, I feel now? like okay. that's why when I read that conversation, I'm like, oh, that's directly related to me talking to her about. Why would you talk to your 13-year-old daughter? about what's going on in Palestine and saying, talking about World War Three, She's 13. Does she really need to know that? Perhaps when she was, say, 17, 16, 17, 18, possibly. But 13, I wouldn't be talking to any of my kids at that age about anything like that. They don't need to know that. What's happening in Israel, Palestine, and the potential World War Three that might happen from that? Okay, and that's why she said she wanted to go live in the woods. Okay, got it. All right. No, no, just wanted to wanted to figure out where that might have come from. Maybe help me see if she just wanted to be in the outdoors. Uh, um, definitely, the World War Three conversation. That's definitely me. Okay, that was me. It's fine. I mean, it's fine. Um, so one thing that I think I, I may have misheard you say earlier, but I want to make sure that I have it absolutely clear is um, on Sunday night, y'all went to bed around 11 
and the reason that you sent her upstairs with uh, Stefan was because you got work in the morning, was it? Or you just started a new job? I just started a new job and I haven't been sleeping well. Uh, I have to take, I take psychiatric meds every night uh, for okay. my bipolar disorder. And yeah. if I don't take them the right way, eat and go to sleep on time, they don't work. They don't work. Yeah. So I was just like, hey, I really need these meds because I, I forgot them the night before. I forgot gotcha. them, I think Saturday night. So Sunday I was not myself. So okay. I asked them like, hey, I need, I need to be medicated. I need to sleep. Can you take care of the morning duties so I can go and okay. sleep? Gotcha. All right. No, I just wanted I just wanted to make sure I understood you right because I was like, did you have work in the morning? Or I didn't write that down, and I, I wanted to make sure I heard you okay. Are there any cameras in the neighborhood that you know? Does anyone have any ring cameras? Do you have any security cameras out front? I'm going to say there are cameras in the front. There are cameras in the back gate as well. Okay. Um, I know one neighbor around here has a ring camera, oh. but... Um, I didn't want anything okay. like that. Okay. Hey, Jay, how are you? Um, mm -hmm. And if you don't mind, just try to keep people out of the um, because I have a canine that's coming. If you don't mind, they're going to try to run another track from the church and from here okay. to see if we can maybe try and try it again. You know, last night it didn't work out because the dog lost interest and they weren't able to continue. But I figured, you know, it's worth another try. The dogs are pretty good. So just try to keep them out of her room. We're probably going to use like a... Does she have dirty laundry or like the a dirt, her, her most recent dirty laundry is oh. on my bathroom floor and we've walked around it. We haven't touched it. Okay. Just keep people off of it. Yeah. Just let, and, and just, yeah. Um, and now I heard that and I've heard it several times. Now that's obviously clothing from the Sunday. Right. Now she gets up. Apparently she goes to school. Or not. But unknown to her mother, she's at school. So her mother believes. And her mother's at home. Now, as a mother, I know, I've been there. You would go round and pick up any dirty washing off the floor. You wouldn't leave it on the floor. She was there all day, well, say from half eleven. Monday to half two when she went to pick up an hour early. Right? And she didn't pick, do anything like that. She didn't tidy up, she didn't tidy the bathroom up, pick up the dirty clothing, put them in the basket, put any washing on, dry any washing. You know what I mean? Why wouldn't she pick all that up on the Monday? Just a thought. Just a thought. As much as you can, try to avoid crowding the, the front door for, for the dog. Yeah. So that they know where to uh where to go from. Okay. Just let me know when they're coming. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get. They're gonna call me um when they're on the way. But just as much as you can, try to keep the scent uh pretty pretty uh fresh fresh. There you go. Cool. All right. Um, and another thing I just wanted to to confirm um because I know the last night was a long night um. But you said you uh, you said when you woke up around nine, you left your house at nine thirty for your doctor's appointment, mm -hmm. um, and Stefan hadn't come home yet. Mm -hmm. And then he called you at ten. You were at like ten fifteen, yeah, ten fifteen ish mm -hmm. to say to have the conversation. With McDonald's and yeah, she didn't want McDonald's, so he came home. Um... I think he had accidentally left his phone at home. Yeah. So he was just letting me know because I had I had called him multiple times. Yeah. He was just returning my call, going, "I'm so sorry, I left the phone at home. I went to the vape store. I waited there for a little bit. Nothing. Um, yeah. Nobody was there. He came back home for a little bit and then went back out to the vape store. And then you, what time did you get home again? Was it around eleven? I'm going to say around 11, 11, 15. Because I think if I heard you right the first time, you got home at 11 and you and Stefan were both here and then he left to go to the vape store again? I did see him, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. I just wanted to make sure I had that because, like I said, sometimes you forget to write things down and I don't want to misremember. Um, but okay, that's all I... Uh, that's all I have for you right now. Um, we're, we're still looking. I mean, that's unfortunately the best update I can give you is we're all, we're all out and we're everywhere um asking people and looking and i know your family's also doing the same so 
Um, if you get anything new like that, that thing you sent me just a little bit ago that I can look into, um, just keep on sending them to me, okay? Yeah. Were any of those helpful about the vehicles? There's something for me to look into, um, to look for, for license plate readers and stuff. As of right now, I haven't been able to find anything else or confirm it, but I mean, it's still helpful for me to, in case something else comes across in the future. So, um, just, yeah, if the, if you receive anything else, let me know. But I mean, do know that obviously just like that kid pranked you earlier, um, yeah. because it's so public, um, you're going to have kids doing that. So, um, don't be too, don't be too scared by it. If, uh, if, if someone does that again. Okay. okay. Right. Thank you. Right. That was the first interview. And I know I stopped it quite a few times. But it's just little things. Like her poor, that poor girl didn't even have her own bedroom. They spent the fourth room. And who puts numbers on their bedroom doors? Right? Who puts numbers on their bedroom doors? Oh, yeah, I'm going to show you something. It's on... I'm going to try and... You know, here. I'm going to see if I can get that picture up of the bedroom... Here. Yeah. I'm going to share this. This is from Grizzly True Crime. She's done this as well. She's put both interviews together with the pictures. But I thought, no, I used her video the other day, so I don't want to use those again. Right, and look at that door. That's bedroom four. Look at the hinge on it, and look at that chain. Who has the chain on the bedroom door? And is that a hinge or some sort of lock to stop the door opening? Because if the door chains here, that means the door opens towards us so you're going to push it open and it'll come that way so is that a lock as well there right and then you've got other pictures uh yeah there's the number four who puts numbers on the bedroom doors I've heard of nine plaques. You know what I mean? But not numbers. Look, who puts numbers on? Oh, I'm in bedroom too. Which one's that? You'll know it's got the number on the door. You know, I've heard of a nine plaque. Like, say it was mine. Like, it would have Angie, Angie's room or Debbie's room or Dee Dee's room or si Simon's room or Trevor's room. Not numbers. Hold on, there's some other stuff as well. Have my pictures here. Look at this. This. Right. And then you got up. On that table, there is a. They actually put the stuff on the table. There's a gun in somewhere. Oh, look, a magazine. Oh, gun magazine. This was all in bedroom number four. Oh, look again. There's the holster for the gun. Bedroom four. See, so you had it right by that bed. I wonder if he ever threatened little Maggie, Maggie Lane with, with that. Little Maggie with that. With that gun. That's the bed. Now, it looks like it's all messed up, but we don't know if that's after crime scenes are being in and we moved the sheets and blankets and whatever, or before. See, so you see the... Locks on the door. I think that's her bed. Right. 
cơ hội phía phía kêu Lạc sẽ join you in lạc sẽ table where they sit and do their interviews Oh look, we're gonna come on to Maggie's bedroom Look Behind these screens is Maggie's bedroom Look That was her space That was Maggie's bedroom Behind those screens When did she go missing? February 26th? Why is the Christmas tree up? Is this her bedroom? I'm not sure. I don't think so because there's a door there. That's his car, I believe. Right, and look, and there's a photo. Hold on. Right, there's a photo of her school bag. I think where that is. Look, look at his school bag. They have, whoever done this to that bag, don't know why, but it looks like they've got some paint of summer and just thrown it over it. Or wiped the floor with, where there's some paint spilt and wiped the floor with the bag. Some other stuff. The back of his car. Not a very clean person, is he? I don't know what that boat is for. What's that mark on the car for? It's like a handprint, isn't it? Look at the inside of the bag, it's like I've just got paint all in it and all over that bag before throwing it in the, in the, in the bin. Look all over her books, everything. That looks like an inhaler. Think what them are. Look, some house white with that black spray paint all over it. I don't think they're very tidy people. If she was going to... Why would you leave your daughter's dirty washing on the bathroom floor on the Monday when you're at home? Right? That's a day when, you, when you're when you not at work. That's a day where, okay, you can chill out, you can relax, but you get things done around the house like you. 
the washing, you clean your house a bit, you tidy it up, you fold washing, you put washing away. You can leave it on the floor. This is the room that she died in. She died in this room. He strangled her, and yes, it. We've not got it written in on paper because we've not been able. To, we will not see the autopsy report. The only time we'll hear anything about that is when it goes to court. But we won't see anything. We'll probably hear it, but we won't see it. We may not even hear it. Right, but she was strangled. So bedroom four is where she was strangled. Draw with some of his clothing, a bag. But no, it's heartbreaking to see that. So we are now going to listen to the second interview. I'm going to speed it up a little bit though because no, can I speed this up? No. Okay, we'll just have to go through it as quick as we can. Now, bearing in mind, this is the second interview on the same day. Second interview on the same day. A lot of the questions are at the beginning, a lot of the questions are very much the same. So she knew, she knew there was a gun in that bedroom, yet she still sent her daughter upstairs to bed with Stefan in that bedroom. How on earth would you have to freeze over ten times before I would even think I've let my daughter near, near anywhere in a room near a gun.
I'm just gonna keep this because there's a lot of back and forth sort of stuff. See that? It's a okay. No, I'll probably go okay for about a split second. Then I go, hold on. What the hell? My daughter is 13. She's missing. Why is sex crimes in on this? Don't tell me it's got anything to do with her age. Why? But if you listen to what this detective says, Sometimes, sometimes take over when it comes to a missing person. And that is, I think, because don't forget, they haven't had his phone yet. They didn't get his phone till today, till that day, the, tw the Tuesday. Right? So... They've obviously seen something on some video somewhere for them to come into it. I was correct. She did say sent them to bed. This is what I don't get when she says that, right? Because she needed a good night's sleep. She sent them both upstairs to bed. 
uh, Maggie's bed was in the li in the dining room area, living room area. So why didn't you just send Maggie to her bed and send him upstairs? You know what I mean? Or even better, put him on the sofa and send her to the bedroom. At least then she can put the lock on, stop him getting in. And she's got a gun in there she could use to shoot the fucker. Sorry, sorry I shouldn't say that. But she has got a gun there which she could have used. Bear in mind, now listen, she'd already spoken to that detective earlier on with the same questions. So why is she, hmm, let me think, what time was it? Why is she taking her time over thinking about these questions? Why is she not so sure about what time it was? Now, I heard this and I thought perhaps she did just mistake the days. Now, I'm thinking, because Stefan did say that uh, Maggie would stay at the Grands during the week if her mum was at work. Why? Because then the granddad or the grand would take her to school, right? And pick her up and things like that. And I did hear that on the Saturday before the party, she said she didn't want to go home. So I'm wondering, did she go to her grand's on the Wednesday or on the Thursday morning? Or after school Thursday? Spent Thursday, Friday, Saturday there. And then Sunday. Right? So the last time, and then by the time she's got home, she's up in bed. She's in bed. Right? So I'm wondering, was the last time she saw Madeline the Wednesday before she died? The Wednesday before she went missing? Because that wasn't a mistake, that was a slip of the tongue, and I think that was 
the true time was Wednesday, 11pm when she sent her to bed Wednesday was the last time she saw her. Not hard. It's not a yes or no question, you say. She can't answer. It's not a yes or no question. Right. Now, if I got woken up, and I have been woken up many times, my family ever listen to my live? Sometimes they come on my chat, sometimes they don't. Many times have. I take medication on the night time to help me sleep so that I can function the next day. Because if I don't sleep, I don't function. I can't do... Well, I do function, but I go over... The, I'm literally... As my son said, it's a bit like I've got ADHD. I'm, my brain is going over time, and I, I think of one thing, I go to do that, and then while I'm doing that, something else pops in my head, and then I end up doing that, and then I end up doing something else, and then I see this, and I have to do that. And I never get one job actually finished. Right? And that went on for a while. And I wasn't sleeping on the night time. I'd go to bed, and sometimes I'd be back up again at 3 o'clock in the morning, or... I'd be sitting up till 4, 5, 6 a.m. in the morning and then maybe going and getting a, an hour or so of sleep before waking up again and I'm up again and I'm all over the place. So I'm on medication to help me sleep, which it does. There are periods where it doesn't. And if, they, if I wake up before a certain time, and I mean this, if I wake up before 10 a.m., I'm so drowsy still, literally so drowsy, and I can't, I, I don't function, I'm literally like a zombie, and many mornings I've sat here from 7 in the morning or 8 in the morning, because I've had a phone call by family or something, and once, that, once I'm awake, I'm up, even though I'm tired, my body won't let me go back to sleep. Right, but then I get up and then I'm sitting on the sofa. Then about say, say I'm up about eight eight thirty by about ten a.m. I'm falling asleep again on the sofa for an hour, and I'm like that all day long. Then I'm going off with sleep. That's why some nights I don't come on live because I'm so physically, mentally drained from not sleeping the night before that. I'm on and off sleeping during the day that I'm mentally, physically drained. And then I go to bed and I sleep properly then. I have a good night's sleep. Or I fall asleep on the sofa and I get a good night's sleep. But if I'm woken up, I can't get back to sleep. And to be honest with you, if she got woken up about eight and she had to be up at nine, if I got woke up at eight, say nine and I knew I had to be up at ten, or I think I knew I had to be up at night. I wouldn't go bother going back to sleep. I wouldn't. It's not worth it. You might as well just get up, get showered, get dressed, drink your coffee, have your breakfast, whatever, and then go about your daily business. Well, I found a timeline today of Stephen Stearns, and I'll see if I can find it again. And uh, she says she got back about 
Right, let's see if I can find it again. Oh God, I had it and then I had to climb. Let's see if this is it. Yeah, I can't get it on this one because for some reason, because I'm not in the UK, I can't always get everything. That's why I really need to sign up to a VPN. All right, let's start this again. She's having to look on her phone. Right? She's looking on her phone to see what time it's going down. Right? 10 18. Now, if that had been me, I'd have said yes. Um, I'm not being at the doctor's long when he phoned me, so it'd be about ten fifteen. But she says ten eighteen. She had to go back on her phone, and then she weren't sure. She said, "I'm pretty sure it was about ten eighteen." So, and it just seems. Everything she says is just like it's being rehearsed. Like, do you remember that first interview she did? And she was talking to the newscast, news person. She said, I'm not sure what, to, uh, what, what I can say or what to say. Because she was forgetting the story that that piece of SHIT is sitting behind her, cracking his knuckles, had told her. So if they're getting up early to go to McDonald's and all that lot, what the hell was this deal at yours at 8 a.m. for then? Hmm? When we know for a fact at 10, 8, 10, he's seen on camera driving away from the school, heading back home. And that's when he went, oh, that's when I realised I forgot the gate key. So I came, we had plenty of time, so I drove back with Maggie, drove back to get the gate key. And that was at ten past day to seeing in the car driving back. She was sleeping, she was dead.
Hold on. I've just found the timeline. Now, she said she got back about 11.15. And she ch he was in the bedroom chatting. And I was just chatting. 11 a.m. Stearns says he left home again to go to the vape shop again. Documents show that detectives were able to find a video of a man at the vape, vape store. The man was a white male who purchased, purchased items and left. This document does not detail what time the video was captured or if it was lines up with Stern's own timeline. Stern says he left the vape shop and returned home. 12.45pm, Stern says he left home to do errands heading up to the area of U US 192. Right? But he's clever. He kept using the back entrance to come and go. He kept using the back entrance to come and go off that complex. But there's no camera. Hold on, he's holding up the line. Holding up the line. I don't care if there's a 10 ton truck behind me. He can flipping wait or go around. My daughter has not come out of school. I am heading into that school to go to the office, to the attendance office, whatever it is you go to in the USA. Here we just go to the receptionist. Right? We call them the receptionist. And I go, excuse me, my daughter hasn't come out of school. Can you tell me if she's got any, perhaps she has got an after school activity. Her name's such and such. They had told her there and then at ten past four that her daughter had not been in school at all. But oh no, oh no, she drives away.
Yes. Because you didn't go in at ten past four when you could have, when you was already outside that school, waiting in the pickup line. You could have got out the car and gone into the school then. But oh no, you drive round to your mum's office. She's not there. You drive back onto the road where she can walk along. You don't see her. You go back to your mum's office. She's still not turned up. You message a friend. She messages back. I know I know when you message people, they don't always message straight away, right? And then you email teachers. And as you said, only one got back. Why if none of the teachers have got back to you, love? Would you still be waiting there? Five o'clock, six o'clock, seven o'clock to find out where your daughter was. You should have been a mother and gone and checked where she was at ten past four. But no, because tell you why, you was wasting time. Why? Because you already knew. Nothing else for you to do. Just come back. Your daughter's missing. There's plenty you could do. Oh, my God. This woman is infuriated. She's reminding me of another person that infuriates me. But that person is a, a male. Right, did you hear what she said? She said she checked the messages, she checked roadblocks and Discord. Okay? Just keep that in mind, roadblocks.
Did she say, is it alright for me to call? So she's calling her mother to find out the exact address of where her office is. But you was only there the night before. You know what I mean? You should be able to know the name of the office, what it's called and where it is. You don't need the exact, just the basic. It's such and such on this road, on this area. Can't believe that. Just kidding, just kidding. No, this woman is asking her questions that she hasn't been, <coughs> that hasn't been put into their narrative, their story, right? So because she go, she, he's not told her about this, how to answer this question, how to, she's, she's feeling a little queasy. Did you hear that? What they couldn't access on Monday night was roadblock. But she just sat there and said, they went through her messages, roadblocks and Discord on the Monday night at her mum's office. The niece and her sister went through her phone. But apparently the niece come over to dad to log, log in and get into her roadblocks. Well, why couldn't she have done that Monday? Because she did.
I'm quite surprised the police didn't take Maggie's phone last night no on the night that she went missing on the Monday night. I think the sugar took it on the Monday night. I wouldn't mind, but a new singer sister come over today, that day, on the Monday, after, after that detective had already stood there and told her, stop, don't have everyone coming in and out of the house, because we've got dogs coming back. But she still has the niece and the sister coming over. She should have said, no, don't come over, because I've got to keep the house clear for when the dogs come back. You know what I mean? So she didn't listen to the detective then, did she? She's more worried about her medication. Yeah, fair enough. They can have an officer go in the house with her while she goes and picks up her medication and walk her back out again. Um, but she's more worried like, oh, where am I going to stop tonight? Hmm.
I'd sleep on the street if it meant if my child was missing. If it meant them to go in my home and check my home and forensic it and everything else just to clear it, I would sleep on the flipping streets. In fact, I probably wouldn't even be sleeping if my child was missing. Oh my lord, this woman. Right, we nearly finished this. Holy shit, they're clicking on here. No questions. No question. Question. My daughter's 13. Why are you here? The sex crime, Yumi. Why? Uh, what else? Oh, yeah. What was the other unit that was there? Oh, yeah. Why is forensics going all over my house? My daughter's missing. Why are you doing forensics in my house? Those sort of questions, love. Just saying. Oh, she finally remembered the address where her mum's office is. It only took her like 20 minutes or so. Simple answer, yes or no. Violent crime.
Now, she's just been told at the beginning of this interview that live from the Sex Crimes Unit, right? And now she's just been told that Violent Crimes Unit is there. That is enough to freak me out. I'd be going, hold on. My daughter's 13. Why is sex crimes here? She's missing. Why is violent crimes unit here? Do you think she's dead? Right? Now, don't forget, they've been working all last night, all the Monday night, I mean. They'd, have, they'd be going out and getting all the videos and pulling up all the cam, uh, video cams, everything along that route to her school, from her school home and everything. So they had probably already got Stephen's Death and Stearns coming home at 10 past 8. And we know this because in that interview, which I was going to play tonight, but it's getting a bit late now. Uh, I'll do it tomorrow night. But it says, well, we've got you on camera at 10 past 8. You know what I mean? So they know already. That's why violent crimes have been brought in. Because they know already that Madeline is no longer with us. Yes, we know we went out some time in the middle of the night. And I've got another video to play, a short one. It's only two, two minutes or so long. You'll find out in a minute. Cruising. He knew where she was. What did you use her car? I'm wondering what colour is her car? Is it white? Be interesting to know if it was a white car or even a silver car because sometimes silver can look white in the dark. Right. That's the two interviews she's gave. Who hello at Unity calling. Hello. Um that's the two interviews she's gave. Now I just wanna get this woman by the throat and shake some flipping sense into her. Oh I'm going that was my alarm going off. Um, because she's literally gave him the red light to do whatever he was doing to that poor girl by sending Maddie and him 
up to the same, up to bedroom number four, bear in mind, where from previous documents that a YouTuber had, it said in, in bedroom four, there was um, a camera stand, you stand which you put a camera on, and some lube, lotion. And now we find out there's a gun in there. And from the photos, pictures, on here, there's a magazine. Yeah, there's a magazine of a gun. There's a gun holster. But I want to show you the door. Okay. This is interesting. My fluctuating moods, anxiety and trauma related symptoms affect my memory, concentration, focus and energy levels. I also have a severe tra trauma responses when I... What trauma? Oh, we know what trauma. I'm trying. Um, where was this car? Yeah, look. This is the door inside of bedroom four. The inside of bedroom four. Now that door, I'm not sure if that's a hinge or not. Oh, let me see. Let's see if I can get a big because we know there's a chain on it. Yeah. Right, so is this big thing, like the door, if the chain's there, you're going to bring this chain up there, so the door's going to open this way in, isn't it, right, as though it's going to hit her in the head, yeah, so what's this here, so I have a lock, a, like a bolt on the door, stop the door opening, like when you got this on, when you got that on, no one's going to open that door, are they? And she was giving him the red light to do whatever he wants. You two just go up to bedroom four. I need a good night's sleep. Now, there's been rumour. Right, I'm going to take this off. There's been rumoured today that uh, she's not going to be charged. But something I noticed in the title. Right? Alright. All right. I'll pull it up when I get my downloads up. Come on. Oh, God, it's taking his time. Here it comes. Right. It said kissing me police had no uh plans of making any charges. Right. And I thought that's kissing me police. They may not have any plans to charge Jenny uh, Jen. But what about uh, Orange County? Right? Could they charge her? Because she's got to have some charges coming to her. She's so, she literally let her boyfriend, on off boyfriend, sleep in the same bed as her daughter. Her poor daughter didn't even have a bedroom. 
didn't even have a bedroom. Right? So we'll listen to this. Yeah, look at it. Right? She's done nothing wrong. Come on. Come on. You've got every mother who's been watching this case in the USA, in the UK, in Europe, everywhere, screaming at their screens. Come on. You've got evidence there. She let her boyfriend speak sleep with her daughter in the same bed. Come on. What the hell? Got no evidence, nothing shown us. That is enough in her own words. She is complicit to what he did. She knew. This little girl, 13 years old, 
from the age of seven had been abused by that vile piece of SHIT. Christ. And they are saying they've got no plans to charge uh, neglect. Neglect. Child neglect. Anything. Throw something at her. And people, are, and then you've got people saying, oh, well, they might use her as a witness against Ste uh, Stefan Stearns. They don't need her. They have got enough to lock him up for the rest of his entire life. He'll never see the light, light of day again. Just on his on the images on his phone and wherever else he had images. Now, I'm wondering, and I don't want to say this, but I'm wondering, I did think about this at the beginning of this case when I found out about Maggie and about him. Was it a... Oh, I can't even say the word. Can't even say the word. Could it have been a S-N-U-F-F, -F, snuff, video? If you know what I mean. Could he have made a snuff video? That's all I'm saying there, because... This is just too sick. It's sick to even think like that. Well, I've got one more video I want to share with you. Uh, yeah. When it comes up. Oh, is my internet playing up? Right, no, let's take this off there, no, so there's a second, we know he went back there, we know that, 
But whose car was the second car that was tracked from where they from the apartment to where her body and why spent like an hour there the first time? Where am I? No. Why spend half an hour there? Why was that? Go off. Get off. <laughs> Why spend half an hour there? What was what was they doing for half an hour in the same location as to where Maggie's body was? What at some stupid hour in the morning? What was he doing for half an hour? Please, my mind can't even go there. He can't go there. I can't. I'm not going to even go there. Right? And it's just so disturbing, so bone chilling, this case. It's, I hope he gets the DP. This is one person that deserves the DP. He don't even need to be breathing the same air we are. Even though we'll only get for, what, half an hour a day or an hour a day. That's one hour a day, too long. He'll be breathing the same air as everyone else. He doesn't deserve that. Right. I'm going to leave this tonight and I'm going to do another live tomorrow where we go over his interview and we have a quick look again at the police cam, body cam of the night Maggie went missing and we'll look at his timeline as well because I've got it here. Right, got it here in front of me. Kissing me, police department later received a tip that someone observed a man matching Stern's description changing a car tire. Deputies with Osceo County Sheriff's Office arrived to the scene and found Soto's body in a green sweat in a wooded area. Now I think you know what I think? I think he got his car puncher, his tire puncher, when he went up onto that field. Because there's no way he took her body out of that boot and carried it across the road and into a field and then behind some trees. No way. Right? He drove that car onto that area where those trees was and took her body out of the boot and then put a place in them trees. And then as he drove out, that's when he felt the puncture. So he drove out, pulled across the road into the little driveway B across the road, obviously, to change his tyre. And that's why he got rid of his tyre into um, a compactor bin. Why? Because it would have uh, forensics on it as to they'd be able to trace it back to that area and everything, dirt, pines, grit, you name it. Uh, yeah, it says here, multiple cameras captured what is believed to be Stearns arriving to the complex trash compactor in the silver Lincoln sedan. According to documents, he removed a tyre or what appeared to be the tread of a tyre and tossed it into the compactor. Following the disappearance of Magdalene Soto's, the deputies were able to find a tyre in the compactor, matching the tread pattern of Stearns' rear passenger tyre. In close proximity, investigators found a trash bag containing a backpack determined to be Magdalene's. Yeah, with paint all over it. Right? But she says she got home about 
yeah, and he was home then. 11 a.m. Sojourn says he left home again to go to the vape shop again. So if he went to the vape shop, he, he's not, he wasn't home when she got home at 11.15. And then at 12.45, Sojourn says he left home to run errands. No, you left home to go and... Um, I don't know if she just still had her in the car. I don't know, I'm going to have to try and do some research on that. Because I know it was on camera, in a car park, right? And he opened the boot of this car up, went to the passenger side of his car, picked up, took something out the passenger side of his car and put it in the boot. They see him moving the body from the passenger side to his boot. So they've got all that because they've tracked his car right up to that garage, that car park, everything. So I don't even believe he was at home when she got there. I think he's told her to say, yeah, just tell him I was here when you got here. I don't think he was. Due to difficulties with cameras at the rear of the complex, detectives were not able to observe any of that video of the car leaving through the back gate. Investigators said they did not see the car come through the front gate from around 8.30 a.m. until 4.30 p.m. So, if he did come back, Why? If he come back between 8.30 and 4.35, he didn't come through the main entrance. He came through the back entrance. So, I don't even know if he came back for the key, uh, the gate fob. You know what I mean? So, anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. We're going to discuss it some more tomorrow. So, if you're watching on replay, please give it a like. And share it. Leave me a comment. I do get back to all my comments. Um, but please give it a like. Help me with the analytics, get this video out more. And thank you for everyone who has been here watching this. So until tomorrow, when I'm back, again, doing another live on this Magdalene Soto. So until then, have a good night, and thank you all very much.